Welcome to Rose Medical Center. I'm Heather Harris, the Director of Cardiovascular Services here at Rose. We wanted to help you understand what to expect before, during, and after your stay for your procedure in our cardiac cath lab. On the day of your procedure, you'll come in the front door of the hospital at 4567 East 9th Avenue. Please feel free to take advantage of our complimentary valet service. Go to the admissions desk just inside the front door. An admissions representative will greet you and alert the cath lab that you have arrived. One of our cath lab nurses will then come get you and take you back to our cardiac procedural care unit, which you may hear called CPCU. Let's get you acquainted with Rose Cardiac Cath Lab. Welcome to Rose's Cardiac Procedural Care Unit, or the CPCU. I'm Lauren Meehan, the nurse manager of the Rose Cardiac Cath Lab. Let's show you around the unit. The CPCU is the first location you will come to when you're brought back to the cath lab. You will be in a room like this before and after your procedure. You will be under constant monitoring by our cath lab nursing staff, and you will see your physician before and after your procedure. Now let's hear from one of our cardiologists about what to expect before your procedure begins. I'm Dr. Jason Wong, an electrophysiologist with Denver Heart at Rose Medical Center. An electrophysiologist is a type of cardiologist that treats problems with people's heart rhythms. I'm going to walk you through how to prepare for the implant of a pacemaker or defibrillator. Throughout this video, you'll hear from me and my partners about what to expect before, during, and after your procedure. A pacemaker or defibrillator is a small battery-operated device that is placed under your skin through an approximately 5 centimeter incision on the left side of your chest, just below your collarbone. A pacemaker functions to increase your heart rate if your heart is beating too slowly or irregularly. It works by sending an electrical impulse to your heart tissue. The impulse travels from the battery down through electrical leads that typically go into the top and bottom of your heart. A defibrillator functions by sending a strong electrical shock to your heart in the event that you experience a life-threatening arrhythmia. The electrical shock to your heart changes the rhythm back to normal and can potentially save your life. A pacemaker that is small like this is implanted in the setting of abnormal heart rhythms, such as a slow heart rate known as bradycardia, pauses in the heart rhythm, or when there's a disruption of the impulse from the top to the bottom of the heart, known as heart block. Patients with these abnormal heart rhythms often experience symptoms such as passing out, feeling lightheaded, or even just dizziness or shortness of breath. A defibrillator, which is a larger device, is implanted when a person is at risk for life-threatening arrhythmias. These arrhythmias are known as ventricular tachycardia or ventricular fibrillation and often occur in the setting of congestive heart failure. Here's how the electrical pulses work. We'll insert one to three leads through a vein in your chest and advance these leads to the inside of your heart. The leads will then be plugged into the battery known as a generator. The incision is then sutured, closed, with medical skin adhesive over top. You will then be moved to a hospital room where you'll be monitored overnight by our team of cardiac nurses. Generally, we will do an x-ray right after your procedure as well as the next morning before you're discharged. Your arm may be immobilized in a sling to protect the newly implanted lead from moving inside your heart. The average time to implant a pacemaker or defibrillator is typically one hour. Now you'll hear about how to prepare for your cath lab procedure. Let's talk about preparing for your cardiac cath lab procedure. Do not drink anything after midnight the night before the procedure. Discuss your medications with your doctor as you may need to stop taking or adjust your dosage several days prior to your procedure. In particular, you will be asked about any blood thinners you are taking, diuretics or water pills, and any form of diabetic medication. On the day of your procedure, wear comfortable clothing and bring a small bag with your personal items and toiletries in the event you spend the night in the hospital. This will help make your stay more comfortable. Finally, I encourage my patients who smoke to stop smoking as soon as possible. Nicotine robs the heart of oxygen and causes constriction of the blood vessels which can compromise your recovery. Talk to either your doctor or call the Colorado Quit Line for help. Now you'll hear about what to expect once you arrive at Rose the day of your procedure.
Here's what to expect on the day of your procedure. When you arrive at the Rose Cath Lab, you'll be asked to change into a gown. We will start an IV so you can receive medications during your procedure. Your nurse will review your medical history one more time to ensure nothing has changed in your health prior to the procedure. Your nurse will ask you about medications you are currently taking as well. At this time, blood work will be drawn if needed. Finally, we'll perform an EKG or electrocardiogram. An EKG is a test that records the electrical activity of your heart. It helps us see the health of the heart just prior to the procedure. EKGs are quick, safe, and painless. Now, let's talk about what will occur during your cath lab procedure. While you are preparing for and undergoing your procedure, if a loved one has joined you, he or she can rest comfortably in our dedicated cath lab waiting room just outside the unit. Our coffee shop is just down the hall. The Rose Cafeteria is down one floor to ground level via the central elevators. You may notice the temperature in our cath lab is fairly cool. This is to prevent damage to the x-ray equipment that is used during your procedure. We will offer you warm blankets for your comfort. Our staff will help you onto a special table. Then, we will begin attaching monitoring equipment to you. Know that your privacy is our primary concern. Now let's talk about what will happen after your cath lab procedure. It's time to go home. Let's talk about taking care of your incision site once you leave the hospital. You will have a bandage over the incision site on your chest where we inserted the pacemaker. Keep your dressing clean and dry for 24 hours after the procedure. After 24 hours, you may remove the dressing. Depending on how we closed your incision, we will give you specific instructions on when you may shower. Do not use any hot tubs, whirlpools, swimming pools, or bathtubs until your incision is completely healed. Don't lift anything heavier than 5 to 10 pounds for the next week. Please don't use band-aids, powders, lotions, or creams on your incision site. You may have a little bruising and tenderness around your incision site. Don't worry, this is normal. We'll ask you to refrain from lifting your arm above your head for six weeks, and we may have you use your sling at night to sleep. The pain is usually very mild and can be controlled with over-the-counter medications such as Tylenol or Ibuprofen, depending on what your provider recommends. We leave the small white strips of tape called Steri strips on your incision, and they will fall off on their own at home, usually within a week. Due to the sedation you received during your procedure, in the first 24 hours following discharge from the hospital, do not drink alcohol, make any important legal decisions, sign any legal documents, drive or operate heavy machinery. You are still recovering. Try to drink eight to 10 glasses per day of clear fluid such as water, unless your doctor advises against it. Do not do any strenuous exercise for the next five days, as this will increase your risk of bleeding at the incision site. Strenuous exercise includes running, stairmaster, lifting weights, or the elliptical. Ask your doctor when it is safe to return to work and drive. That time frame will vary based on your procedure and how you are recovering. Finally, Take all medications as prescribed to you. This may include aspirin and or medications known as antiplatelet drugs. This is critical for your recovery. If you experience any of the following, call 911 or go to the hospital immediately. These include bleeding or swelling from your incision site, new and or severe lower back pain that is different from chronic back pain you may have, coughing up blood, if your arm or leg below the puncture or incision site changes color, becomes numb, or is cool to touch, fever of 101 degrees or higher, or if you have dizziness, extreme fatigue, or fainting spells. As you heard from our doctors and staff, 
Contact the Denver Heart Office if you have any concerns about your health. And be sure to follow all discharge instructions, including your follow-up visit. It has been our honor to take care of you. Thank you for trusting your heart to Rose.